Hello Ratbags, welcome to a special survival show. Here we go again with another developer interview and talk about a brand new game, a medieval survival game that's going to be coming very soon to a Kickstarter or Indiegogo near you. This is Renown. I was put on this by Sir Winter, so a big shout out to him. I think he's done a decent video with the devs as well, taking a look at the combat. <laughs> Hopefully we're going a little bit deeper with some of the questions about the game, how it's going to progress, what you can expect, and big survival fans out there, could this be the proper open world survival game in a medieval ancient setting you've been looking for? I, I kind of hope so. I kind of like a few good things from this. As always, not just the hype, I'll give you my breakdown at the end of the chat as well about I think the prospects of right now. So really do help like the video to share the word about this game. Go and check out their Discord, which will be in the comments section, and absolutely show some support. And let's get some fresh developers working on something nice and new. But mainly so I can carry on doing it is but a scratch meme as much as I possibly can. Let's go. So big shout out to Jesse and Jacobson, two of the developers of a very small team for Renown. Thank you so much for having us uh, take a look at the game hands on and how are you guys doing? Very well, man. Very well. Good, good, good. Just want to say thank you so much for checking out the project. It means the world to us that you would uh, give us your time to. No worries. Come no worries. It's I'm also joined by my man Ray, who helps me out all the time in games, PvP games like Last Oasis and Atlas. Yeah. He's much better than I am. So let's get straight into it. What is Renown? How long have you been working on it? And I guess how long? How did you start? Would be about two years if you consider it as a passion project, you know, so the, the hobby project that has slowly over time progressed, progressed, and about a year for real development. Right. As we've, we've become a company and we've actually started to get these real systems in place. Nice, nice. And so, what do you reckon a kind of timeline is that you're like hoping to maybe um, get it into a Kickstarter? Yeah. So, oh, Kickstarter, we're literally looking at the next month or more, right. potentially, you know, if we can get our pieces together. Which the idea of the Kickstarter is essentially to take the product you see before you're here with the combat and the da da da, uh, which is, has been made entirely by our four man team with no budget uh, and turned into something that's presentable to folks, where it's actually a fun, good game mode. It's all, it's all working. So that uh, if folks are willing to back our game, there's actually a fun product there for them to play it's not just a ephemeral idea no it's actually there's actually something there to do and you've got you've got some outline videos showcasing what you your plans are like in terms of like base building and open worldness already like it's a few dev vlogs so just go and check out their youtube channel guys it'll be in the comments section if you want to see some more of that video and you may see some of that gameplay um from their videos over the top of this video as well but yeah so far it's looking good it's like the combat feels you know, some games I feel, for PC games, players want lots of different avenues of attack. And so far, though, the very just core element of being able to do a few different attacks, variations, is pretty decent. It's pretty good. It, thank you, man. Thank uh, you very much. It means a lot to us. I mean, Charlie and I, like he said, we started this a long time ago, honestly, with just the dream that we loved Rust so much and we loved Chivalry so much that we just wanted those two together. We, we, we always love survival games, but their combat... I know it's always felt a bit lacking. It never really felt in depth enough. Um, so that really was the the like the light bulb in it's our the driver. Head, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That sold us on creating on creating this game. Um, uh, so yeah, that's great to hear that you're enjoying it. I mean, you touched on a great note there of the animations. Of yeah. The thing. So one thing, our our lead pr uh, programmer and the combat developer would kill us. We didn't mention that he was the one who's a programmer who made all of these animations you're seeing. Right. So he is not a professional animator in any way. Right. Um, it's okay. just him, you know, pulling in the. Uh, I know for an Aussie, it's a very like good. On your mate like you know getting the hard yards through that's the main goal of the actual crowdfunder is that we can get ourselves a skilled animator who yeah, actually will be able it. to turn these into well I, I, I still think it's yeah. good like yeah so as well as that the um sometimes i feel like some of the other games model for me a little bit over complicated like with uh the way that you know you've got to be really pinpoint accuracy now i guess you probably want that eventually to be a bit more you know, so players can really have that skill level and maybe get that skill ceiling, or is it more of an arcadey style Rust experience? No, no, we we definitely have um the the hitboxes are quite good at the moment. I mean, you mm. may have seen in some of our videos that you're able to do uh, ducks and and matricing, for example, like Charlie. If you if you swing at me, we yeah, are yeah, we might we might not be as effective on hyping here, but like if you, you can check out, uh, right, yeah, check with raids. But yeah, that uh, it's, it's it's almost about finding the balance, right? Because we are. Whoop, Oh, I think that was a. Whoop. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
I yeah, think no, I know. I, I did get hit just then because of the ping, but... Um, so it's about finding that parity because we do, on the one hand, right, have this group of players who are amazingly high-skilled uh, Mordhau chivalry players. Yeah. Who they grab this system, they implicitly understand it. they got no trouble. But on the other hand, we've got these folks who have never, ever touched the system before. So it's about finding that nice balance between the two. Where the yeah. person who knows this system can have a great time, and where the person who doesn't know the system can still get their hands on it and have a fun environment where they're not just getting whomped on. And what, what's the situation? Obviously, it's a long way, so you're just focusing on the combat at the moment and then hopefully yep. getting the uh, the sort of kickstart started. And then I guess after that, depending on how successful things go, that's when you start ramping yeah. up the rest of it. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. our plan right now is uh, we've, we've spent the last nine months at least really working super hard at transition from a passion project into something we wanted to do full time and we've gotten to the point now where we're really happy where everything's at combat wise so we're, we're showing it off to the world and in the hopes they can help us fund it our goal is that we're gonna break it down into like a modular sort of release um where we can get people to test it you know or yeah. we want people to be able to that back us to be able to enjoy themselves while they're testing so it's not it's like I feel like people understand that they're testing, but of course these days when they pay for something, they expect it to at least be enjoyable. All so right, that... if I uh, explain the modular thing real quick. Yeah. Um. So what we're sort of going with, right? It's it's almost double sort of sided. Partly it's we like simplicity, we like quick, fast <laughs> gameplay, and partly it's like the necessity of the fact we got no money and we're a four person team. Yeah. So we basically come to the conclusion that we need to make quite a simple and a straightforward game. And even down the development project, like, as you lads are already going at it, you're sort of having a bit of fun, like, you know, chopping away at each other, da da And this is the most basic form. Yeah. So we basically want to take this here and then add your traditional game modes to it. So the player, that's just, they're having fun, right? They're just playing games. But for us, that's basically a perfect simulation of a survival environment repeated again and again in a clinical sort of environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like yeah. I said, um... I think getting the basics, which is combat is really important in games like these. So Indeed. nailing that first and, and not overflowing or overdoing stuff is, is probably a wise idea or a good idea. Yeah. Um, what kind of experience have you got previous? Like, is it just hobbyist? Is it just, have you ever worked in game dev before? Well, Jacobson, Jacobson and myself are quite, yeah, this is our first project. Uh, Jacobson's got actually quite a large production background in film industry. And oh, I'm, well. um, I've got more business background myself. But the other two lads in our team, uh, Mr. Z, has got a long history in this uh, genre, specifically like uh, sword fighting genre. Right. And uh, our artist is a very skilled uh, graduate who has shown like great initiative. He's been amazing. The armor you're or, seeing now. Is, the, is yes, the armor, work. for instance. You're uh, able to you swap the armor you're wearing. Uh, yeah, if you hit our uh, N. It's a little bit buggy at the moment for individualizing it, but if you just hit the tears button, you can see the complete set. Three sets in the top left. Yeah. Disclaimer. This one's the asset flip mod. We're hoping to fix, change this in the future, basically. We, yeah. needed, a, a, we needed a tier 4 to represent what uh, yeah. the last tier of armor would be. Yeah. Um, but as we were running out of time, we wanted to get this crowdfunding going as soon as possible. We just decided to, to buy yeah, this. Yeah, placeholders and, uh, are fine. I think, we'd like I said exactly. earlier, like we moved on a little bit now where, you know, back in the day, if games are only churning out 20 games and they're using the same assets just to make 5 bucks every time, that's a no-no. But some team that is developing it I think it's okay, you know, having assets absorbable and it, you know. we hope to remove as many of these flipped assets as possible. Yeah. Uh, but I should say though, uh, tier three like this I've got on. Uh tier two, which hopefully I'm hoping it's changing on my guy right now. Oh yeah. Uh tier one and peasant are all custom made by our artist uh KZ. They look great. They look really Yeah, good. we're we're super proud of him. He's done a great job of just and that's sort of the goal too, is to have a properly weighted armor where you know if you look at like tier three um you can sort of see like it's a couple of areas which stretches like the armor stretches like back of the neck for instance yeah but other than that it's pretty well rated that's what we're aiming for too so you don't have that weird warping armor so armor really will dictate like what kind of class you are there's not uh, is there plans for presets or is it just purely about what weapons you've got and armor you've got no, imagine uh, much more in the rust vein of things where right. you'll have armor you can make we're gonna have a progression system of tiers so for instance i put on the uh, tier one Right, where you can see it's quite male, it's like, it's really not quite heavy armor, and you go to like tier 3, and it's like full plate, like it's renaissance level, or pre-renaissance level sort of plate armor. So that is the idea, so it's similar to Rust, you might pick up a tier 3 breastplate, 
but you've only got tier one gloves and legs and you know what i mean you just like oh put on the tier three best plate like lovely yeah make the most of what you've got but basically what we're trying to do is as much as we have that we have the presets here to help for people to just understand the tiers you are able to uh, pick and choose the armor you're wearing much like russ you know you're it's a bit buggy it, right you now. won't just put on a full set of armor you'll be able to change the exact items that you're wearing yeah um you could you can mix and match between different tiers of that nature so it's not um, and of course, right now it's still a bit buggy. There are some things like they they glitch over each other if uh, if you've got them both on, but that's mostly because it's not removed. Like if you hit or... N, you can sort of see the number of combinations of armor pieces that could go together on here. It must be several hundred. That's Just looking at all the boots and gloves. It is. We've got to make sure they all. It's still pretty good. I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Like yeah, the arm pieces look good. Thank you very much. The, are they planning? Um, so like, I guess presumably it will be about being able to craft them, becoming like a blacksmith, or more sort of yeah, find some. Well, of you should follow us over here. Yeah. Follow us. Yeah. Follow us. Nice segue there. That was seamless. Indeed. Not even planned. <laughs> Um, so you can see, if you look around, right, I'm sure any Ross player would recognize these type of buildings with the segmented pieces, and... So if you look at the manor over there, you can imagine that's basically like, if you imagine the player-built structure, right? That's your keep. Yeah. That's the beds put in your little storages and your best stuff, and that's where you retreat to. But we're sort of hoping to flip building a little bit from Ross by using these types of prefab structures, right? So, for instance, this here is your blacksmith. And we walked past, if you just turn around there, that white building is the warehouse. Right. Large, so uh, the large hoping, one with the open Yeah, the big whitey there with the, the uh, open door. That's a not bad um, system. A lot of things, um, so Atlas is moving more and more into that, not just for their ships, but also they've got things like the I granary and stuff like that, where you just put the building down, it gathers resources for you, or it will craft and make stuff. And it's a big building, you know, it's a, a nice role player's dream to build a village yeah. and have 20 different ones. But you will have a free-form sort of building system as well, or...? That's exactly right, yeah. A bit of a system. So the idea isn't so much... We absolutely love the role players, but it's not so much that. No. It's to take the repeated, like, grind manual labor out of building a large area like this. Yeah. Because imagine you're playing lots, right? You want to build this. You're putting down every single wall and, like... Yeah. You know it's... what I mean? That that's That sucks. So what we're hoping to do is to use one like carts, as you saw over there, it's a bit of a shit view from here. But imagine if you can use something like a cart there, right? So you're farming, you load up the cart instead of just carrying it on your body, it just goes to the cart. You're out getting wood, for instance. You then just take that to the warehouse, press a button, it gets dropped in the warehouse. Oh, by the way, we're all within a banner claim here, like a cupboard. So the part of the reason you build a keep is that you'd want to protect your, your banner, your claim. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, and then from there, right, say you want to go to the blacksmith and get some swords, it's just clicking a couple of buttons, provided you've got all that infrastructure set up beforehand. Right, so it's just linking it together. Yeah. That's cool. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I actually really like that. So, um, so like, you've got your your sit, your sit fort there. So that's your fallback location, right? That's your... Actually, we could wander over if you like real quick. So I'll show you the... It's a bit different when you think about a shooting game. Because, like, a shooting game, you see someone within 20 meters of you, like Ross, they're dead, right? you got a gun. They, you know, like, you got about five seconds to determine who's alive and who's dead there. Yeah. But in a game like this, you're that far away from me. We have a conversation almost as you come over to me, right? You're like, no, where are you going, right? You going in? Like, you know, I'm like, I can stop you just doing this. Load on if you're trying to fight in, and then, you know, like, you kill me. I get back to the door here. We have a couple of boys Watch with... Out, uh, the, the on the, oh, right. the bullet! No, come on! <laughs> ah! The intruder's already inside. But you know what I mean? So then you get to the um, the inside door. So, by the way, this is Killbot, our uh, fighting Yeah, AI. we've already met. We and Ray took care of him yeah. earlier. Gave him the house to uh, hang out in. Sorry, more my point of that being that you can imagine just this simple little setup like this is actually a really defendable kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's not so going to take like play... 20 billion years to get something set up. Players will probably always want something like this. They'll always want their central keep structure. But we'd like to expand the sort of like industry in quotation marks of Ross, which is all done on a bench that's normally put in the deepest, darkest part of your base. Yeah. Behind the most walls, the cones. Um, to be almost split out into like a larger area. So we'll yeah. likely, of course, support having workbenches inside as a fallback. But if you want to take advantage of that very convenient system of throw shit in there, grab shit out of the blacksmith, you know, like there's a flow for that. Yeah. Like, it's a and the re reason why the reason why we feel like we wanted to transition more to a system like that with uh, larger buildings used for crafting is so that it, it warrants, uh, it, it forces, not forces, but encourages people to create more medieval looking bases you know we're trying to move away from the rust honeycomb um style that's been that well it's you, you have to build that way because you're trying to put the most amount of walls between you and the 
mm. good stuff in the middle of your base. Whereas in this, we want that more to be a funneled sort of way. We want to funnel people through Logical. pathways and gateways and things of that nature. Yeah, it's more than, realistic you know, as well. Low, yeah, we, we want we want the push and pull of a of a, a sword fight, a medieval battle, than the the outright just dem yeah, demolition, demolition that that is of rust, you know. Yeah. Uh, did you play yeah, um, how much damage like, you can do in five minutes? Not a thing. Obviously, it's going to be an open world and PvP game um, as well. But what about players that don't want to really participate in PvP? Are they going to just have to hopefully get protection from others? That's a tricky question, right? Because yeah. we never want to those people. We, like, I would never want to say like, no, this is not your game. No. But at the same time, this is kind of that game focused around this system, right? Like, oh, oh you dragged, you da da da, right? Like, yeah. So there is always going to be that demographic of players who are not the hardcore, just want to fight for blood type forever. And they, we never want to neglect them. But at the same time, we can't cater to them directly. No. But what we really want to do is get all this right. We get all the, the try-hardy systems done first get the survival systems in, and then we've got tons of room to experiment with the role-playing fight. Where yeah. we can get them tables and beds and all of the things that makes a role-player exciting. And I guess but, just like Rust, you can have farmers. You know, you can have people that oh, obviously yeah, will, will need to uh, take part in PvP, but they are just enjoying the other stuff. I was completely not including the fact of, like, if you imagine in Rust, you're not a great shot, for instance. You're yeah. not a great PvP. -er. You're not a ton of help. In a medieval game... All you really need to do is be able to close a door, throw a spear, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's sort of it, it almost reduces that bar of like the skill ceiling is incredibly high when it comes to sword fighting. Like, oh, let's fight. Yeah. But yeah. when it comes to actually assisting the fighters, you could do a ton more than you could in Rust. Where you go to try and do help in Rust, you're just gonna get shot. You know what I mean? Oh. You try and assist your your fighter in Rust, you're just gonna get shot by the person who killed the fighter immediately. <laughs> where in this, we've actually you've got a lot more utility to actually play with. Yeah, so they've yeah, a, player, a, a, sing, a solo. Yeah, exactly. A, a solo player would be able to hold a doorway, for example, like one player by themselves that would consider themselves someone who's not very good at PvP could grab themselves a very long spear and a shield and stand in a doorway and probably have a pretty easy time making sure their people are stuck there for a while and they wouldn't yeah. have to be very good like they, they would give time for their good players for instance to respawn kit up and get back there and push that doorway back and retake say the ground they've lost outside that that gateway for example if that person was in rust though they die within five seconds of coming up against the killer from the other team yeah the killer from the other team is hello and shoots them in the head bang bang Done. yeah and obviously oh, the key i mean key thing is that people have often wanted a more primitive style sort of game that involves a lot more um swords and melee weapons but I, is there plans for sort of crossbows and stuff like that and bows Absolutely. as i've said we've had to focus our resources down like so specifically the the sword i nearly said gun the swords we're holding right now are the ones that are our programmer alex has actually configured and made better the rest of them are literal placeholders from a previous game right so we even had time to move on we've got bows in but again they're super basic like, we wouldn't want to show you the bows because no, they don't no, look amazing it's, yet it's too early like exactly like so the medieval sort of gamut of weapons could be there that's the plan is to have maces and and other stuff as well and right you can actually see maces axes ranged our uh the programmer right now has, has just said we're about to be able to start messing around with one handers and shields very soon so it's probably you know we're going to probably then open up another branch that will just be short, short weapons one-handed weapons and shields where we can get players to just mess around with just those so we're able okay. to pinpointly correct and make changes to systems instead uh, of just having the overshadowing of all the other systems literally run systems. like almost a similar like for players it's fun like we're having fun just playing this shit like it's a bit biased of course so. taking account the pvp and like trying to get through doors and stuff what about siege sort of stuff is it more just a personal yeah. ball and players or do you plan any sort of siege warfare but yes basically right now we have trebuchets catapults battering rams and we're working on a handheld siege equipment as well right. um Good. So basically, the idea being that you'll you'll create these these things at your base. Um, um, but yes, things such as uh, trebuchets are already in the game. Of course, they don't function properly, um, but they they are there ready for the. the so it's the long term plans to have like you know a big mix of being able to get into a settlement, try and take on a doorway or someone who's maybe a bit unprepared, but also you can lay siege properly when someone really has prepared. 
like that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean, the the main thing that, I mean, I've, the, the design philosophy I've said to all the guys when we started all this was, you know, we, we want to keep it simple, but the main things that will make a game like this fun is the ability to fight with a good combat system, the ability to build a base, store loot, and, and destroy each other's bases. bases. So that was the main thing that we needed to get right. Um, right. And that's what we're going to be working towards first, is of course all the survival systems, but raiding is a, a very large part of it. Um, what we're hoping to do is, while through our module release, right after the crowdfunding is complete, um, we'll be releasing a, a dueling module, which will basically be very similar to what this is now, just a more polished version, uh, where, where it has all the infrastructure in place, leaderboards, that nature, rounds passing through. So, so um, after that, we, wanna, we want to introduce uh, the, a raiding module, which will basically be a simplified version of the game into, you can imagine it being two bases, if, if for example, further outside the field that we're currently playing in, there's another version of this base where two teams can start. And for those that play Rust, you would have probably played for um, Raid Simulator, which is basically the same sort of thing. You, you spawn on either side, and, and the whole objective is to destroy the other person's base. Now, the beautiful thing about doing a module like this is that we're able to test every feature or every every thought of how we want raiding to work very quickly. You can imagine it could be played out within 10 minutes, um, and we would be able to test different features. Would, would it be better that you can destroy the walls, or can it only be? Can you only go over walls and break down doors? You know, all these questions that we have about what is the best way that raiding would work in a game like this, um, we'll be able to answer very quickly in, in something like that. So we're really Sorry, to, to add on to that real quick. Um, if you imagine too, that raid sim, right? Like that's fun in Rust. Me and me and Jacob have had good times in Rust playing that. So we hope to provide that to the players, but for us as developers, that's a perfect simulation in a clinical environment of a raid, basically, right? We can change any of the little criteria, teams, uh, resources, how big the base is, and get this repeated simulation of these like environments. So it's, it's almost the perfect thing for us as devs. Yeah, and we, we to like to make it fun pans out and stuff in terms of like what would be i guess it's maybe a little bit too early then but it in in terms of like dream game what is the world going to look like is it going to be a a huge landscape that can house a thousand players or is it more instances of a hundred players or 200 players so you guys where can i find the kickstarter maybe in a month's time when you maybe launch what were the details who are you going with so we're going indiegogo looking like right now the best place for all of the news, just like beta, upcoming dev vlogs, content, is our Discord. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Go also, we're always available. Yeah, we're always available on the Discord. You can literally just add us if you want. Don't recommend it, but we're, we're, we're available. Um, so that is that is our primary media hub. Head to the Discord. From there, we'll be going to Indiegogo. Hopefully, that'll be a nice little tight, quick campaign. And, excuse me, going from there, we'll be going either into Ziola which are a sort of uh, middle company from Steam to sell the product you see here, if we can uh, upscale it a bit and make it very nice. Yeah. Uh, and then straight into, it, hopefully, skipping Steam early access, if possible. Really? Uh, thank you. Okay. Well, if, that's the idea. I'm not, I'm not saying this is a promise, but if everything works out in the plan that we're sort of trying to lay down, that's the idea, that we can almost skip early access. Like, we might not completely skip it. There might still be a bit of time in early access. But that's the idea, that the game would be ready to, like, that's the full game onto Steam. Nice. So okay. we're hoping for a light little development schedule if we can. That's pretty, you know, that's like, very yeah. interesting because, you know, so many games do do here. And nowadays, you you do only get one chance. It doesn't matter if it goes early access or it comes out 1.0 fantastic. Uh, yeah. Generally, gamers have got so used to early access that they still treat it pretty harshly. Um, yeah, you know, in my mind, yeah. early access is basically release. I mean, it, 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 it's gotten to that point now, funnily enough, that it really is. Like, I, even I, I see games as early access to be release, you know? Yeah. It, they're, they're going for a lot of money. They're trying to make money to continue development, sure, and they need right, testing right. done. Um, but that really is the, the main... The main it, it, is, it is a launch. And, and, of course, there will be a larger launch later on, but 
for all intents and purposes that it is a launch um and of course that all it all comes down to how how everything goes from here on out um we're gonna try our best to get exactly uh what we're trying to do but um we'd hope to just launch it completely because there's a lot of things that people expect with early access um and, and if it goes to plan we can skip it but um of course we're, when we can't say right now it's so far away from that point that is no, exactly no, it's we can't still make it very early early days well um, that's sort of the goal it's basically the plan like Enough talking. Avanti, I want to see your dev skills. Come at me. Come oh, at me, bro. I'm gonna, hey, this is never uh, hyping, but let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, of course you're blaming it on that. Of course you're blaming it on that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, I was doing well. I was doing well. I was doing well. I'm not doing so well. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. The oh. businessman said to stop attacking the player, said to kill. Yeah, <laughs> I need I need my regular pin cushion. Fight, but... yeah, fight, fight this place. Raze, fight this what what do you think about it so far? Then let's have a, let's have the, the the opinion of the common man. Uh, yeah, I think it's shaping up well. I think yeah, very set on it. That makes me happy. So I think he's doing a great job. Thanks, man. Really. Thank you very it. much. There we go. There we go. Razor spoken. That's going to be in every video from now on. Raise. Razor spoken. <laughs> the raise point of view. Uh, but yeah, it's sound. It's as good. It's like obviously, yeah, early, early steps. People can be a bit harsh sometimes, not realizing that this is all just a ton of work to get to even this stage. And you know, it just shows the promise of something that could be really even better. Um, but so far, yeah, it's pretty decent. I like it. I like. I feel the vibe. I feel the world. Yeah, yeah. Kingdom Come Deliverance, but with multiplayer. Recently, we've had Medieval Dynasty. Great little game. But so many people wanted that to be multiplayer aspects added to it and have an actual open world to explore together. So, you know, if it's got them kind of components in it as well, where it's sort of points of interest, yeah, I can see it going going well um i will let you all know the minute the kickstarter goes live guys let me know what you think about uh, renown what do you reckon about the combat systems already in place and do you like the sound of a medieval rust in the future a big shout out to the renown developers thank you so much guys no thank you thank, thank you, you really very much back from the entire renown team we really appreciate you giving us your time so as always, I'll give you a breakdown of what I think its chances are and what I really think about the game. It was great talking to the devs. I totally agree with a lot of their points. And big shout out to Sir Winter again and them for giving me the time to take a look. It's an interesting one, for sure. It stands out compared to other games like Chivalry or like Mordor if it is a truly open world. And the idea that they're going to start small with the modules is a good idea. Get something refined and focused before moving on to the next section. They're lofty ambitions. They don't have a mega amount of experience and I would say that would probably be the one sort of negative I would say they don't have maybe enough now just yet the idea that they're not going to maybe launch into early access is a bit of a puzzlement as well I don't really think the idea of skipping it is as maybe good when I thought about it afterwards Although we both agree that you only kind of get one launch now, so maybe it is a wise decision not to expose yourself to a lot of flack and talk and maybe just take the time to refine it and polish it. But that's if there's enough interest generated. And I just don't think there'll be enough interest if there's not something to show where people can actually go and try the game. You know, good, bad, indifferent. If your game is out in early access, it is getting eyes on it. If you're just kind of building it behind the scenes and this is like one of your first projects, I just can't see that working out very well. Not to be a downer though, I do think it's a great idea. And having a kind of arcadey mix of that Rust style combat, as in, you know, the ease of which you can go and hopefully raid or do certain things is good. Although I did express to them that I think they should be aiming more for the medieval market, absolutely going after them Chivalry 2 fans, the Mordor fans, rather than trying to maybe get too in bed with a Rust audience, because they're very different games. Like, maybe the mechanics do work in certain ways about base raiding and the way you base raid from Rust, and it can be transported to a medieval game, but I'm not too sure. That would be something we'll have to just wait and see how it actually pans out. What I do know, it's so cool that someone's got some fresh ideas. We haven't had a real decent medieval game like this, maybe since uh, Reign of Kings, and even to a lesser extent, uh, medieval uh, engineers. That got pretty much cancelled when the, the team behind that started working completely and only on Space Engineers ahead of their 4.10 release. So yeah, it's time, it's due, a kingdom come Deliverance sort of style multiplayer game with PvP. It sounds great and hopefully the devs can pull it off. But I think it'll be a long road and uh, hopefully I might be able to give you some info about it if it does manage to be half successful.
Let me know what you think about the game. Absolutely leave it in the comments section and I will give you guys a little update on when they've announced their Indiegogo campaign and give you guys a heads up, especially on Twitter. Make sure you follow me on Twitter for lots of gaming news and obviously join their Discord, which will be in the comments section down below. Until next time, Rat Bags, I'll see you later.